let's talk about free body diagrams. So free body diagrams is a way in mechanics that we use to analyze and represent the forces acting on a certain object. So one thing that you should be careful is we are treating that particular object as a point particle. Um, the idea between in point particle means that it would not rotate because for a single point you can't simply rotate a point but say for say a long stick uh, with a center of mass maybe at the middle then you are allowed to rotate it so that will involve a more complicated idea in physics uh, which we may get to learn in uh, option B if you want um, and so we are not going to discuss it for now and the other thing that you need to pay attention when we draw the free body diagram which actually is simply drawing all the forces of a bo body uh, you also need to pay attention to the length of the arrow because that will represent the magnitude of the force so maybe in middle school in IGCSE uh, you just roughly draw it and uh, usually you'll be allowed to to go I mean to, to get marks uh, no matter how long or how short you, you draw but in IB uh, we'll pay close attention to that so for example for uh, the first example here if you have a box that hang in the mid air uh, and since it's not moving you really have to get the tension and the weight to be the same length so for example if I draw say like this instead say oh tension like this and weight like this then it will means uh, the tension will be greater than the weight and therefore the boss should accelerate upward and that doesn't make sense normally okay so uh, you need to be very careful in whenever you draw arrow in I because uh, that will represent the magnitude of the vector the second example here is having a box that is on a slanted inclined plane and um, from the example here uh, although the Tesla didn't mention apparently it is frictionless so uh, when there's friction of course uh, the picture should have probably one more force that is like this uh, even better because friction should be between the box and the surface of the plane then you should probably draw the friction like this um, so this could be one free body diagram that you could draw in this situation some people may say hey so what about if I draw something like this because the, apparently the box may slide down right so should I draw it maybe like, like a force like this uh, instead and the answer is uh, no alright so this is never something that you want to draw for, for free body diagram the reason is that whenever you draw the free body diagram you always try to draw the raw force alright I make up this name but uh, what it means is raw is uh, you originally have what you could have later on is in this scenario for analyzing for calculation uh, which we will learn in the later session you may divide it into different component think about what you learn in projectile motion when you launch a certain object with certain velocity I say you let's say with a certain angle theta then you could actually decompose the initial velocity as in u cosine theta for horizontal and vertical as in u sine theta so I hope you still remember this so you can use the same techniques for uh, solving this kind of situation like here so later on, later on uh, we will try to figure out the direction uh, given that the inclined plane has an angle of theta in fact if you try to think about it you should be able to find out the angle for this one should be W sine theta from the weight and the one that is perpendicular to it will be W cosine theta okay and um, the reason why the box given that there's no friction uh, will slide down is simply the W cosine theta will be equal to R and therefore the only force that would let that draw or push the box downward is simply the W sine theta so we'll uh, talk more about it later on uh, when we encounter such a question in the exercise and uh, just 
pay close attention to it. So this is not free boy diagram, although we will need to uh, draw this later on for analyzing the situation. And the last example here uh, from the textbook is uh, you may have say uh, a circular surface, like um, like imagine you again you got a pencil or something, and then uh, maybe there is a little b ball on the pen maybe something like that. Okay, so the uh, if say there's a ball here, it may slide off like this, right? So what will happen when the ball is here? Then the ball would still have the weight and also the reaction force. And notice that the reaction force should be perpendicular. Like I said earlier, uh, the name that is normal force is because it is perpendicular, 90 degrees, with the surface. And since the surface here is uh, actually circular, then you can draw a tangent to it. So that's why the R is pointing in this direction. Let me give you a mini practice here. In the picture, there is a magnet, a lot of magnets, apparently sticking onto the fridge door. Can you draw the free body diagram of a magnet that is at rest on the door and show uh, all the forces that you have on the magnet? You can now try to pause the video and continue after you draw it. A few moments later. Okay, so let me demonstrate how to draw it. In order to show it better, easier for everyone to understand, I will draw this side view. So here is the surface of the fridge, and here is a piece of magnet right here. Okay, and the first thing that you could think of, uh, as always, is uh, there must be weight. So I'll put on weight here. Um, I think this is a good habit for you to always spell the full name. If uh, you really want to be even better, you can put weight W maybe. So uh, in that case, that would be like the best, the most detail. And the other thing that you can think of is uh, for sure, there must be a force for magnetic force since apparently it's a magnet, right? So say this is the magnetic force. and I will use the symbol FM to represent it and think about this if these two are the only forces that the magnet will experience then what would end up with for this magnet is it will go in this direction and accelerate towards this direction and it doesn't make sense at all because as we said it should stay on to the door so there must be another force at least to hold up and balance uh, the forces here and one of the forces that you should think of is like what we mentioned earlier that's the normal reaction force n all right so normal force i would say all right and remember it is 90 degrees with the surface but i think i draw a little bit too long so i'll try to draw much more like close length as in for the red one which is magnetic force so that they could balance each other and therefore there's no horizontal movement at all so normal force here and again, uh, you can try to re-evaluate again if these three are the forces, all the forces that you have, then this magnet will simply fall down because that is the net force. So there must be one more force that exists and pointing upward. And that, guess what? It would be the friction. Again, I'll try to draw a similar length. If I could draw it on a piece of paper I'll try to use uh, a ruler to measure even All right, so there's no way that uh, people can criticize on the length itself for friction however I will draw between the uh, magnet and the door cause again this is how uh, the friction will be acting on between the surface and I think the length is okay I think yeah and I can put a simple call a lowercase f for normal force actually I can put uh, n if you want and uh, basically that's all for this magnet. Let me give you another case. Here's a scenario. Uh, imagine this is a ground and there's two wooden block here, which uh, one is smaller that is on top of the bigger one. And what happened is, uh, let's say I use a string to pull it, or you can simply use your fingers to pull it. And there is a force that is pulling the bigger one and 
you can imagine that when I pull too fast at a certain amount of force, I can pull so fast that the upper one will fall down. But let's say the smaller one can still stay on with the big one. So when I pull it, both of them will be pulled together. All right, so there's, there's no slipping. No, okay, it's not slipping, but slipping in between the two surfaces. So, um, can you draw the free body diagram, free body diagram of each of them? So for the big uh, wooden block and for the small wooden block as well. You may assume there's no friction on the ground and there is friction between the two blocks. Take your time, pause the video. Imagination. Let me demonstrate to you how we can draw the two diagrams separately. I will draw this small block first, and then I'll draw the bigger one. Because uh, if I draw the smaller one first, uh, it's easier for you to understand. So this is a smaller block. And uh, of course, the first thing that you may draw is the weight. So I'll, I'll just write a symbol for now. Uh, you can write the full name. And at the same time, since uh, it is simply moving forward, and so you will only have, I mean horizontally, so you own, you, own, you would not have any net force that is vertical, so there should be a normal force given by the bigger block to the uh, smaller block because uh, this, this block is not touching the floor, so you can't say given from the floor, it's actually given from the bigger block. At the same time, there must be friction between them, as I said. So since the whole system is moving forward so there must be a friction that is pulling it forward all right and that will be the force actually help the small block to move forward as well at the same time so th this is all right for the smaller block at the same time for the bigger block so I will draw again this is a bigger block with uh, more flat ground and let's take a look at what kind of force you have so one force that you should have should be weight again and you should also have the force that is preset by the situation that is pulling forward using maybe simply two fingers maybe at the same time you should also have the normal force given by the ground because it simply doesn't sink to the ground right so a very strict vertical one at the same time since if you look at the smaller block again uh, there is a normal force that is adding on to the small block and this is given by the bigger block so in this case i should draw a force that is adding downward onto the bigger block because these two the one that are yellow in highlighted in yellow uh, will be an action and reaction pair which uh, we may explain further later on for uh, Newton's third law and for the upward force here this is given by the ground so don't mix it up this this one the green one this normal force is different from the yellow one so maybe it would be better if I call this M1 and this call as N2 maybe or, or you can think of other better notation and also this is a WS maybe and this is a B right so small and big and then uh, other than that let's not forget that there is friction so since the friction on the small block must be going to the right so that the whole system can you know move to the right as I said then there must be a force that is adding on to the bigger block that is going to the left so this is friction so maybe I just distinguish them this is pulling force P okay and so uh, this is friction simply so I would use uh, maybe blue to highlight it and these two these two blue forces uh, although I should draw the length to be the same these two forces are action and reaction pair so if they exist they both exist if they do not one of them do, do not exist the other one should not exist as well so uh, this is what happened to the smaller block and the bigger block again uh, between the ground and the bigger blocks there is no friction so I would simply ignore that 
and in that case that will be it and since the whole system as I said uh, it should be going forward as in going to the right then it should have a net force that is going to the right so for the smaller one uh, the upward and downward force will balance that is fine and uh, there's one force that is going to the right and that is fine as well so you still have acceleration going to the right for the bigger one let's just re-evaluate again to see whether we did anything correctly so for vertical we should have the two downward force that is equal to the upward force so I think in terms of the length I did not draw this very well so I might just cheat a little bit I would need to make it longer okay so that this normal force from the ground uh, in terms of magnitude should be equal to the sum of this weight and m1 over here so then uh, these big blocks will not go up and down vertically and comparing horizontally uh, we have the friction the blue one versus the pulling force here and apparently the pulling force has to be bigger than the friction here therefore uh, the whole big you know the, the big block here can be moving and accelerating to the right so uh, I think this is a final correct version okay so this is how you can draw two separate free boy diagram and in fact you can do one more thing and that is uh, consider the free boy diagram for both blocks at the same time and considering this whole thing as one system so these two blocks as one system how you can do it is, uh, in fact, if you look at what is inside these two free boy diagram, you will see there are in internal forces which exist on both diagram, and that is exactly what I mentioned earlier: the blue one, frictional force, and the blue, uh, yellow one, the uh, normal reaction force. And since both of them would be adding on each of them when you combine them they are kind of cancel out so uh, for these two pairs we call them internal force and that is when you try to combine them they simply uh, do not exist anymore so when I have this whole system so I, I'm not going to draw the edge or maybe I draw the edge then in that case uh, what you left with is simply the pulling force and there should be one single combined weight of the whole system and that's it that's it uh, no not really not really there should be one more there should be one more normal force which is n2 right same same as this one okay and uh, you should not draw any friction or normal reaction like the yellow one here you only draw the N2 right here if you want to draw only single one free body diagram so you may ask me so when do I draw one when do I draw separately it depends on the situation of what uh, you already know or what you want to find so if you want to find uh, the information of the friction between them or the M1 of course you have to draw them separately otherwise there's no way you can express it in the equation so we'll do more practice in the future when we learn about F equals to MA